Hey friends, welcome back to the e-bike noob. Today we're going to talk about the Swagtron EB6. Pretty fun bike. We're just going to go for a little cruise on it in a uh, couple of different spots here. Got footage from uh, my iPhone and a little bit of GoPro footage for you as well, which will be a bit smoother and full screen. We're also going to talk about it. We're going to do a review and kind of see what's going on with this bike. It's pretty fun. Not going to be for everybody, but you know, we'll go over the whole thing here. Hope you're having a great day. As always, thanks for watching the e-bike noob. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you want, go ahead and hit that button. If not, that's cool too. Thanks. Hope you're having a great day. We'll start in the front here with the tires. These are 20 by 4 inch fat tires. They're a Chow Yang brand, which isn't really anything I've heard of, but they seem to be holding up okay. They're pretty knobby and still plenty of tread left after the 800 or so miles the bike's got on it. So really no, no issues or anything there. We'll kind of poke through the wheel and we'll see if we can see those brakes. So we'll come over to the brakes here. These are a mechanical disc brake. Nothing fancy, but uh, they, they work just fine. They need adjusting every now and then. A little bit squeaky here and there, but nothing out of the ordinary. Rigid fork, as you can see. Suspension fork might be nice, but you know for well under a thousand bucks you can't complain too much Again, I did change the stem on here just to make that adjustable and it is tilted up pretty high One of the things uh, that kind of drew me into the bike was the fact that it was almost set up kind of like a almost like a old-school BMX bike So my original plan was uh, kind of to like chop the stem off on there put some you know old-school like square BMX handlebars on there Maybe some pegs, you know, kind of go for the, the old school BMX thing. Let me know. Let me know what you think about that. Leave a comment or something. Um, but yeah, kind of moving on here. Um, we'll go to the cockpit in a moment or two. Also, I did change the seat. The stock seat was just terrible. My girlfriend rides this bike, so that is a uh, ladies focused seat there. Um, and she likes it. She likes it better than the stock seat at least. Coming around here, we'll go down to the battery setup. Um, this is a decent design here. It's really kind of out of the way, and it's sitting in a spot where if you want to, you know, kind of toss the bike around, do some wheelies, or go off little jumps or whatever, it's really in a pretty good position for that. Um, it's a 36 volt, so it's a fairly small, lightweight battery pack. This is a 7.8 amp hour battery in here, so not a ton of range, but. They're fairly inexpensive. They're like $200. I think they're under $200 for a replacement battery. So really not terrible there. Um, and again, they're pretty lightweight. So you don't notice them as much as some of the other bikes. Controller is just kind of housed in this little box down there. So again, pretty much out of the way. Um, Kickstand's mounted in the, uh, the back here. Out of the way, stays up, you know, when you're riding around. Um, so not terrible. Every now and then this, this bolt does kind of come loose so you gotta you really gotta check that every so often and again uh, mechanical disc brakes on the back side here if you notice the, the wheels do have the little punch outs on them I guess to save weight it just kind of looks cool that's on the uh, front wheels as well and finally we'll kind of come over to the cockpit here let's get a quick shot of the whole thing from the back side yeah pretty cool huh uh, but here's your cockpit just going across here pretty plasticky grips not the best whatever brakes with the motor inhibitors bell again I changed out this stem so that's a little different than stock but small riser bar there got the big clunky thumb shifters uh, these are the same ones they actually use on the aerial rider d-class then this is basically your only control just turns it on and off I turned it off there and back on. You get five little battery ticks. Let's uh, see if we can do this without taking off. Yeah, as they, uh, you know, they just start to dwindle down. And we've got a half twist throttle, as you can see there. And the power button just kind of turns the whole thing on and off. And that's pretty much it. For a uh, electric bike, well under $1,000. I don't know if there's much uh, much else out there that's gonna gonna beat this one out. But what the hell do I know? I am, after all, a noob, the e-bike noob, to be specific. 
Uh, so maybe I got it all wrong. Maybe this bike is a total piece of garbage. But I can say, honestly, I've had a pretty good time on it. My girlfriend rides this bike a lot, and she really enjoys it as well. So we think for, for its price, for under $1,000, it's really been a lot of fun and would definitely recommend it. I'll keep you up to date if anything goes wrong on the bike. And, you know, nothing major has, has gone wrong with this one so far. A couple flat tires, no big deal. Got to keep the chain lubed and keep those brakes in check. Uh, but really nothing, nothing catastrophic has happened. Uh, but the bike is, you know, fairly inexpensive, so I, I do kind of wonder how long a lot of these parts are going to last, if anything is going to fail. So if anything like that happens, I'll definitely keep you up to date. Speaking of parts, I just want to talk about a few terrible parts on this bike. Uh, the grips are just terrible plastic. They're hard. They have that weird shape to them, and they're no good. So you'll probably want to change those. The seat is almost in the same category of unusable. It definitely needs to be replaced. Um, so spend 40 bucks, 50 bucks on a good saddle, and you'll really, really thank yourself for doing that. There are no lights on the bike, so you'd probably want to get some kind of headlight or some of those little flashers or something. It did come with reflectors, but those things broke off almost immediately. Sorry. And there is no rack on the bike either, so not a ton of places to put things, but not the end of the world. Uh, some nice things, I gotta give credit to the pedals on this bike, even though they are just plastic, they looked really cheap and I thought they were going to break almost immediately, they have held up for the, the entire lifespan of the bike, and this thing has taken some pretty serious, like, you know, pedal smashes on rocks and curbs and, you know, trying to do wheelies and falling off and all sorts of fun stuff. And those pedals have held up really well. And I was pretty sure those were going to break right away. So got to give those pedals credit. They're, they're really hanging in there. And the chain guard as well um, is kind of built into the chain ring. Uh, we used to call it the sprocket, but, you know, it's called the chain ring now. Um, kind of has these little, like, two, you know, discs on the outside of it to prevent your pants from getting sucked into the chain and causing you to, to wipe out like an idiot. The motor is not super powerful. It is a 36-volt, 350-watt motor, so it's not going to blast you up hills at 30 miles an hour or anything like that. But it seems to be very dependable, and it is very efficient. That's one of the nice things about the low power motor is that it really makes the most out of a small battery, especially on a bike like this where it is, you know, roughly an eight amp hour battery. And as you may be able to tell um, from the, some of the, the other small footage, motor really makes there's the no best of screen that. or any kind of menu to where you can change the pedal assist setting. So there's only one mode for pedal assist, which is pretty low powered. It doesn't go very fast, but once again, it's very efficient. And you can almost, I have no idea what the maximum range is, but it almost seems like you can go just kind of indefinitely on pedal assist only. If you start using the throttle, you'll get about 15 miles of range. Depends on the wind, hills, stuff like that. You know, I've gotten anywhere from about 12 to 20 miles on a full charge, but it seems to average around 15. If you just do the pedal assist and don't throttle, I would imagine this bike would go a good probably 40 or 50 miles on one of those tiny little batteries which is pretty cool but it's not going to be the most thrilling ride you're only going to go about eight nine miles an hour uh, so just keep that in mind the top speed on this bike i don't know if you saw that in that uh, little clip from before uh is about 20 miles an hour on a, on a real full charge for just a moment or two you know a couple of minutes you'll get about 20 miles an hour as a top speed and then as that battery starts to drain you will absolutely lose a little bit of top speed just like any other e-bike out there not having a screen or anything makes it very user friendly as well people that have never ridden an e-bike seem to be pretty comfortable with this one i've had a few of my friends ride it and they just kind of hop right on like it, you know almost like it's a regular bike uh, when you're ready you just hit that big red button the battery indicator lights up at that point you can tell you know everything's kind of on uh, and it just you know again it's a low pedal assist so if you start pedaling it's it's pretty gentle kind of getting into it uh, and then when you twist the throttle it's pretty low powered so it's not really going to take off and really surprise you too much uh, so you know people that are newer tend to really like it it's also really low to the ground you know the overall seating position is just very low um, you know, depending on how tall you are, it might be a little too small. 
uh, but it's very low standover height, so you never really feel too high off the ground. It's just very inviting, so great for new people, very user-friendly. The bike's also easy to ride, too. It's easy to just kind of throw it around. It's really lightweight, weighs under 50 pounds. Uh, it's a short wheelbase, and those you know small but fat tires just make it really fun to kind of toss it around and to you know tightly and nimbly kind of navigate through some really tight sections. It really, just makes a, a good ride. If this thing was faster, if it could do 25, 30 miles an hour, it would really, really be a good time. So we'll see if maybe we could do some upgrades and just get a little more speed out of it. Really make this bike fun. This bike was delivered in a really timely fashion. I ordered this bike on a Sunday. It came on a Tuesday. I remember I was really excited about that. It was a couple months ago. Uh, but I was really happy about that. It was really easy to put together. Like most e-bikes, you just got to put the front wheel on. You got to put the handlebars on. And I'm pretty sure that was it for this one. The brakes didn't need any adjusting out of the box. They were a little bit squeaky um, after they kind of got broken in. Um, not not anything out of the ordinary. They're still a little squeaky, but you know, just got to clean them with some alcohol solution. Uh, you got to tighten those brake cables every so often. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, the drivetrain was really, really dialed in out of the box. I didn't need to tweak anything or make any adjustments. So that was pretty nice. And to this day, that has held up really, really well. Thanks for tuning in, as always, and watching the e-bike noob. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know down below. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that button. Hit the bell for notifications. We'll see you next time.